Hi, my name is Megan Richards. I just finished my undergrad at Duke, and I'm here with William Connectly presenting on behalf of our team at the Duke Institute for Healthcare Innovation. We're here to talk about our work building a maternal early warning system for the patients at the Duke University Hospital. Maternal morbidity is defined by 21 severe pregnancy and childbirth complications that dramatically increase the likelihood of a maternal death. Unfortunately, the rates of these complications and the deaths that result from them have been dramatically increasing in the United States, with the morbidity rate nearly tripling over a 15-year period and the mortality rates doubling within that period. Duke experiences twice the rate of maternal morbidity compared to the U.S. average. Our work is motivated by clinical inter interstate review boards that have estimated that two in three of these deaths are preventable by early detection and treatment. Manually documented clinical checklist-based systems have shown some success, but are resource intensive and have struggled to scale. Our work has two main goals. First, to compute phenotypes in real time based on ground truth data. And second, to predict these outcomes in advance using machine learning. Of those 21 complications, we chose the eight that you see shown on the left here based on the prevalence rates at Duke. Each of these phenotypes are defined with lab and vitals-based data that are um, available to us live, and you can see the conditions for these on the right. Once we have those labels, we use machine learning to try to predict them in advance. These models were trained on about 19,000 encounters over five years using 291 features. You can see that we use features that are both time-based, such as vitals and labs, and also more holistic information, such as demographics, patient history, and indicators of prenatal care. These models for initial validation were used, were built with gradient boost in trees and trained with a prediction window of four hours. You can see we achieve high AUC performance across all of our phenotypes. We also note that this is a problem with extreme label imbalance, which we showed with the prevalence values on that left-hand column. This is what drives our lower precision values in that right-hand column, and we account for that in practice with careful clinical review of thresholding options and uh, prediction calibration. Now I'm gonna show a demo that Will made of our clinical facing dashboard. The first views are designed for Duke Birthing Center OB and anesthesia directors and managers. They provide survey views of patients across department floors and their conditions. The patient list captures eight morbidities and location information. Patients with the most comorbidities at recent times sort to the top. The user can click the patient's row to see vitals data on the bottom left and trends on the bottom right. Next is the census view. Rectangles represent beds, colors represent med or at-risk conditions, however to see patient demographics, and eventually model data. The use case is different for first responders. DHI's Aldis system sends notifications to a zebra phone or email address that are directed to OBAPPs and anesthesia CRNAs. The next step is chart review and bedside clinical assessment. These models and dashboards are not diagnostic. The care provider decides whether to continue attention and kick off a care protocol. The high and the governance team continue to refine this process. Thank you very much. Thank you.